Back here at home, some 1.3 million long-term unemployed Americans are going to lose their benefits tomorrow. And Democrats are furious that those benefits were left out of the year-end budget deal, vowing to restore the aid when Congress returns in January. But the nation's unemployment rate is down to a five-year low of 7 percent, and the government last week reporting the fastest economic growth in two years. So opponents, including leading economists, say it's time we end long-term unemployment benefits. Wow, that's double trouble for those folks out of work. Charles Payne from the Fox Business Network joining me now to talk about this. It's been a hard road for those folks, but is it, is it reasonable then to take away these benefits at a 7% unemployment rate, Charles? You know, uh, in this whole era of fairness, Jamie, this is uh, this question is skewed a little bit. Uh, and it's always presented that we're being unfair, but you know, some would argue people who've looked into this really deeply on a historic level that when you let people get paid for not working for such a long period of time, it diminishes greatly their chances of ever getting a job again. So uh, the people who are arguing for this are saying already we've had people in this country who have gotten uh, benefits for 99 months that they should continue to get these benefits. But it's not necessarily the fair thing to do because the longer that they wait out the job market, the more their skills erode and the less likely it is that they will not find a job. Certainly not the job that they had or, or may want right now. But at, benefits are averaging 300 a week. As you say, it could be a disincentive, even if there were more jobs, to look for one. Many people, $300 a week is enough, if, especially if they live alone, maybe to not look for a job. Right. And there's an additional almost 2 million people that lose their benefits in mid-2014. So what does the employment situation look like then? Do you think more people rushing for jobs and it's tougher to find one? Well, you know, if we do, you, you started this whole part off uh, talking about the economic mo momentum that we have right now. If you notice, our stock market really has gone straight up here recently. Uh, the Federal Reserve is starting to remove some accommodation, all because the signs are a lot better for 2014 being a pretty good year for the economy. Not the kind of robust post-recession recoveries we've seen in the past, but those same problems are holding back the job market. But that's going to open up. That's going to get a lot better. I think the problem, though, and we've got to be frank about this, is a lot of people are going to have to accept jobs that pay less than they made before, that aren't the jobs that they want, and it's a new economic reality for a whole lot of people. But there's been proof in the past that when people come back into the job market, it actually helps the economy. There's a certain sense to well, any economic they'll scheme. Spend. Hopefully they'll spend. But well, yeah, of course they'll spend. But here's the thing, Jamie. No matter what the economic scheme is, if people don't buy into it, if there's not a certain element of confidence that's also revealed with people coming into the job market and not leaving it, it's not going to work. But look at that 7% number. Is that the real unemployment number, 7%? No, no. It's, it's, it's higher than that. Um, we have millions of people, maybe I think last time I did the math, maybe 7 million in the last five years have left the job market completely. They're not looking, so they're not counted. The real number is a double-digit number, but it is getting better. It may have hit rock bottom. The one thing for sure, uh, 99 weeks is time, you know, it sounds draconian, and for a lot of people watching, it's going to sound mean-spirited, but the right thing to do is to sort of remove it. By the way, this money has to be borrowed. It's got to be paid back with interest. Right. This is not free. We don't, we don't get it from pixie dust. So, uh, you know, people who are working are going to have the burden of paying this back as well. So. 26 weeks is where it's always been. That's Understood. probably where it should stay. Maybe Any there's a middle ground. Stuff. Maybe yeah. there's a middle ground since they didn't put it in the budget. Totally understood. Yeah. Charles, thank you so much. Have Thanks a good a lot, show. Jamie. You too. Good to see you. Pixie you dust. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, the president signing that bipartisan budget deal that Charles was talking about while vacationing in Hawaii. The two year deal scaling back some domestic and Pentagon spending cuts. The president also signing a defense bill that cracks down on sexual assault in the military. But the commander in chief and Congress may need their rest. Democrats promising to push bills on boosting the minimum wage as well as extending jobless benefits when Congress returns. And while well, we may see another big battle over raising the nation's debt limit, which could expire sometime before March.